Well, welcome to uh, Brackley Boats in Gravenhurst, Ontario, and um, we are uh, here on a, it's about to rain, I think, a nice uh, dark uh, day outside, but uh, inside we got all the lights on and we're working on, um, we just brought this boat in, it's uh, the very first clarion boat, uh, or f first major boat that they ever built, and it, I think it's, I had to ask Dwight, and he's not even sure how long it was. Thirty years ago, he knows that, but he thinks it. He thinks it was 1989, 1990. This would be also first um, Steve Killing's first powerboat design, and uh, it's the it's the most uh, iconic Clarion boat that that uh, when everybody thinks of Clarion, I always think of the Gold Cup, and that's what this is: a 25 foot Gold Cup, six foot six beam. Um, and uh, they are, um, this one's powered by a Corvette uh, LS6 engine uh, and it's about 375 horse. And it's here for, well, it hasn't had a lot of uh, uh, huge care over the years, so it, it really needs refinishing. It's got a lot of dock rubs and stuff. You can see a big spot here where somebody tried to touch up uh, with some red stain where, where it's actually more of a tan color. But uh, we're going to strip the whole thing down anyways and uh, refinish it. And we'll do a little hardware work. We've got some bottom work to do. It's a, it's a, it's a whole pile of uh, items we have to deal with. Um, but it's going to look a lot better when we're done. We're redoing the upholstery. And we're kind of excited about this one. Um, because we know we can make it look really, really sharp once we get that finish back to a nice even color and shiny again. So we, uh, the only other uh, major thing we're doing to the boat is we're extending the running surface um, back. Uh, here you can see the step in the, uh, in the hull. And uh, some of these boats had a little tendency to porpoise slightly. So uh, the cure for that is to put uh, these, uh, we've had these uh, plates uh, fabricated to go into the step and they'll have uh, turn buckles on there and you can adjust it ever so slightly until you get it perfect and then uh, actually I think this boat runs really well up until about 60 mile an hour and then it and then it just starts to to pour up a slightly so we're going to fix that and uh, Dwight's been very helpful about uh, uh, teaching me how to all the ins and outs of these and so we're looking forward to a collaboration of uh, of uh, effort and it's nice to be able to talk to Dwight on a regular basis about his boats because He's uh, certainly helpful in guiding us through. I, actually, we build the new Clarion boats now here. So um, Dwight's been around quite a bit and uh, I'm really, really fortunate to have his uh, expertise because he knows a lot and I love picking his brain and he's the first guy to tell me it's slim pickings, but he's, he's, uh, he's pretty modest, but he, he knows a lot of stuff and I really appreciate his help. <laughs> well, this is a C.G. Peterson. It's a Swedish boat and it's uh, 1905, it's 43 feet and it's uh, 5 tons and it came in for some uh, bottom work and uh, it uh, had a very extensive rod, especially in the back end. In fact, we had to do a bunch of patches in the boat house to even get it floating um, to get it here and we brought it over, uh, I guess it was the fall of 2020 and uh, late October, I think, and we had, we had a gas pump, we had electric pumps, we had life jackets on, we had, <laughs> we had everything that we needed. Uh, we had a boat there to get us just in case, but it, it managed to stay afloat and everything was good. It didn't take on too much water. We were pumping constantly, but it, uh, it made it here. And then uh, it's been a very slow process of taking planks off and framing. I, I think originally we were planning on doing about uh, 12 frames and about four planks and now we're at about 62 frames and I, I haven't even added the planks but I would say it's around 20 some in the bottom and these are big big wide six inch planks by 14 feet long like there's there's a lot of the most of the bottom's been replaced and it was steel framed and uh, we did the same restoration they did on Rambler which is we the steel was rotten in the down in the very bottom part of the bilge in between the stringers. So we cut out the steel and we uh, put in wood. So the, there's actually a wooden frame that comes up to say here, which is bolted through the, the good steel frame that's left and then it's 
and then it's wood through the bilge. It works really nice. I, I'm, I'm glad that we got an opportunity to work at Ram there to see how that Vic Carpenter did that boat. So we did the, applied the exact same technology to this. And um, the, the boat is, uh, is one inch thick uh, Honduras mahogany uh, planking. And um, it, the planking really wasn't that bad. But underneath, the structure was all bolted together with steel bolts. And they had uh, brought it out terribly. You, could, you couldn't even see. The plank would be solid. The internal structure would be solid. But you take a plank off and it would be just absolute mush where uh, things were bolted together. And the steel just doesn't want to be steel anymore after, I guess it would be 117 years. So it just, uh, it was tired. It was tired. It's never had any major work until now. So we've, it's going to have a new lease on life when we're done. And uh, it's going to be a lot, a lot safer. We won't need the pumps. We won't need a fire pump in there to get her back home. So that, that'll be good and the owner will be happy. We're also redoing all the steering. I don't know if you can see down here, uh, but uh, we read uh, all, all the, uh, the struts and everything was uh, all uh, steel and it, it had all deteriorated terribly and we replaced everything with stainless. Uh, rudder, key, um, keel, uh, it says a lot of work in this boat, that's for sure. A lot of work that we've done. And we're also redoing the, uh, the washroom and the mid cockpit uh, flooring, bulkheads. Um, the old washroom in this boat was actually just a ceramic funnel that went right out the side of the boat, right around here. And uh, actually right around here. And so we're gonna put a proper, you can't, uh, you can't pump black water into the, the, the lakes around here. So uh, you've gotta, we've gotta have to put a holding tank system in and make it a little more user friendly. And it has a, uh, also the, the sink will remain the same and it's a gravity fed, uh, the water reservoir is on top and uh, you just, it, it just has the pressure, the water pressure from it on top to, um, to run the sink and it's got a beautiful ceramic sink and wooden. It's uh, very much like what they had on, uh, I think the Titanic had similar. I think they had to come and they had to fill up your, your, uh, your sink reservoir and it's very, very similar on this boat. But it's a beautiful boat to be on the water in. I don't know what it is about these, I call them glass cabin launches, but sitting in there is like sitting in your living room and looking out that window, it just, it picture frames Muskoka perfectly. I, I can't describe it, but it, it's just such a wonderful feeling to be sitting in there on a sofa and looking out this big wooden window and nothing but water. And uh, I think it's the only way to travel myself. But um, I wish there was more of them, but they're not easy to uh, maintain, as I'm sure this customer would <laughs> would uh, would tell you. Uh, it's a lot. It's a big uh, financial effort, and uh, to keep these things going. But I'm so thankful that he's doing it because they're such an important part of, of history. Uh, originally, it was powered with a four-cylinder Napier engine. Now it has a little four-cylinder Volvo diesel engine in it and um, it had uh, one of the other things we're doing that I forgot to mention is we're changing the steering has been all changed uh, before it had uh, a pulley system and uh, it had chains it had cables it had laundry line uh, uh, all connected together in weird place it ran through tubes and stuff and it was constantly failing so we, we've replaced the whole thing with a hydraulic system and um, and all the running gear and everything's been replaced with stainless uh, hardware, so it's going to be a lot a lot safer to to drive now. So this is Kurt Hillman's shop. Hi, uh, miss you guys. Uh, wish you were here. Um, next year, for sure, I hope. <laughs> um, what's behind me here, we're just bringing it into the shop late, I know, this is mid-March. Um, but this is a 27-foot hacker, built in 1989. It's got the um, West system on it, uh, with the uh, plywood inner skin. And it is getting a new bottom already, because um, the old one is just delaminating completely from the inside. Um, so we're about to uh, pull the engine on this probably today, maybe tomorrow, and uh, flip it over and get started on a new bottom on this boat. So the um, the bottom that's in it right now, it's with the plywood. Um, 
I've never seen too many of the plywoods that have been reconstructed, uh, plywood interior that actually last. Um, the plywood just starts delaminating real quickly on them. Um, typically what we do is you throw a mahogany inner skin uh, on diagonal to the actual planking um, to make it work. And whether years when they built these, they used cheaper, softer woods, I can't speculate on that. That's all I can do actually is speculate on it, but uh, I've seen many of them rot out that way. So, so one thing about uh, West Systems and epoxy bottoms that uh, on wooden boats that I've seen many of is they have um, horizontal lines, uh, cracks in the plant, um, in the fiberglass, or sorry, in the epoxy itself. So what we've gone and done is we've added um, a layer of fiberglass in between the epoxy um, to give the epoxy a bit more strength because epoxy is actually quite brittle. It's strong, but it's also brittle in the same word. Um, hard to explain that, that's just the way it is. So if the epoxy, my thought is that if we add that one little layer of uh, like 10 gauge um, fiberglass in the middle of four layers of epoxy, that's going to help create a bit more of a strength and bond of the epoxy itself to the planking. So nothing will move. So here we have a 1924 ditch burn. Um, it is, what is this thing? 24 feet long. 24 feet long. Um, it has come in for a stem um, and garbage planks all the way down. Um, and we have gone and top coated it so once currently. Um, one more to go on this and then she'll be uh, ready for the sailing seas again. Boat was, uh, we had to pull the engine. Uh, the engine got uh, stripped and refinished by Jeff Tishaw um, and uh, repainted and everything. Um, then we flipped the boat upside down and we pulled the stem and a few all the bow planks off and replaced them all so <clears throat> so to my right here this is a nineteen eighty nine uh, twenty seven foot hacker. Uh, came in because uh, the interior was delaminating as uh, the other hacker craft in my shop was. Um, we ended up having to put a whole entire new bottom on it um, because uh, it was completely delaminating. And oddly enough, this was a three ply skin bottom, I've, something I've never ever seen in my life. Um, it was about an inch thick of wood um, and it was all rotting. Frames were completely gone, um, not realizing that when we first got into the job because um, everything was epoxied on the inside as well um, from stringer to stringer and remarkably that was all that was rotten on the bottom but you couldn't stop there, you had to take it right out to the chines. So, um, Needless to say, we've gone and added uh, four layers of epoxy to this one on the outside as it was and we just added a, a layer of 10 ounce um, fiberglass cloth uh, in between just to help strengthen the exterior. Interior, we did not add any um, epoxy as to what they had before. Um, this is to let the inside breathe at least. Um, we also top coat this boat uh, with a couple of coats of varnish and it's just awaiting the owner uh, and the uh, lake to open up. The boat on my left is a, looks like a ditch burn, but it is not. It is a 1930 Ross. Uh, they were built in Aurelia. Um, this here came in and we have completely stripped it down bare and refinished it with nine coats of uh, varnish. Um, there's just a couple, couple of little things that we're waiting for uh, coming back from the Cromers uh, to put on this and uh, she also is ready to go. Um, we touched up some bottom seams on it, um, but other than that, she's in uh, pretty good shape. So they're both just waiting to go uh, for Mother Nature to say, come and play. I'm uh, Jeffrey Breen of uh, Breen Boats, and this is, uh, this is our shop. We're in Rockwood, Ontario. It's kind of 10 minutes east of Guelph. 
So behind me, you can see the uh, first boat I'm going to show you. This is a replica of a Riva Super Aquarama. It's 27 and a half feet long, powered by an Elmore 430. Right now, you can kind of see the bare bones of it all jigged up. So basically, this boat's all ready for the bottom now. It's all 15 inch mainframes tied together with the keel, gunnel, chine. And between each 15 inch mainframe, we put a subframe, which is sandwiched in the middle for the ultimate strength. Right now, I've just completed the drive line. Basically, like I said, it's ready for the bottom stage. So within the next month or two, it'll really start taking shape. These were like a really popular boat in Italy, mainly in the 1960s, kind of coming back into popularity now. Nice big forward drive, <clears throat> very practical. Go out and you know relax on the lake with the sun lounge on the back. We started it about a year ago and it's just kind of been a filler kind of spare time project until now. Whenever we have a gap in between kind of customer jobs, we'll jump on this for a couple weeks here, a couple weeks there. It's all white oak and then the sandwich blocks are all mahogany just to save some weight, gives you enough strength. Well, the way we do everything is encapsulated plank. Basically, it's the same construction method they did 100 years ago. The only difference being we encapsulate the planks, so it eliminates the shrinking and swelling and maintenance of the conventional boats. You can see with the string lines, we've just got our drive line carbon fiber shaft log installed. And that has the uh, driftless, dripless shaft seal that goes on, so another spot where we eliminate any maintenance that came with the older boats. To eliminate any guesswork this time we were able to get a full size printout of the engine. So that way we're able to get it as low in the boat as we can to keep the drive line low and basically have the engine take up as little room as possible in the rear cockpit. The original boats were built with uh, dual engines with actually less the horsepower of the single engine. They had to be a lot higher in the boat and basically took all the room in the aft cockpit, which is why they made the sun lounges up top. So we're gonna do a couple of green modifications and make this kind of a custom one of boat. Yeah, so this is a, a 26 and a half foot Breen uh, custom gentleman's racer. So we refer to it as the ducktail. So basically the back end comes into a point. We did uh, one other boat like this similar Margaret Shirley. This is the more traditional kind of straight up, uh, kind of reminiscent of the 1920s. So you can see the solid, everything solid bronze castings made from wooden patterns. And then all the steering is dra drag link, same way they did in the 20s for real sports car feel. It's kind of an exciting stage. This hull is all done inside and out, everything's sealed. So most of the engine and drive line rigging's all done. Exhausts are gonna come out there. It'll be a nice profile. Cockpit and seating's all kind of laid out and generally roughed in. It's kind of nice when you can get most of the engine rigging done when the uh, deck and everything is not in your way. So that's what we've tried to do here. That way, after when you're working around everything, it's it's a lot easier if everything's roughed in. So this has an Elmore 365 in it. Mid-block, they refer it, refer to it. So this is actually the Breen Boats number 20 build. I think my dad built the first one around uh, 20, 21 years ago. So it's been a slow but steady stream. And you can see kind of how our hulls are built really well right now. The engine stringers grab every main frame every two feet and then in between every eight inches grabs the keel, chine, and engine stringer as well. And then everything like the cockpit and firewalls, everything's built off the engine stringers. So 
by the end of it, it's you know pretty indestructible. Knock on wood. And we do a custom cradle for each boat, so it sits on the customer's boat lift and is as relaxed in the boathouse as it is in the water. No stress points. <clears throat> Adds to you know the boats staying perfect forever if you can take care of them. So that's a wooden pattern. So anything we want to make, we just make a wooden pattern and then have it cast. Same way they did 100 years ago. And that becomes that. They come back as rough casting, so you got to machine them all up and get them working. And then chrome's kind of the last piece in the process. <clears throat> and so built at 26 and a half feet, it's a length that'll fit into most people's boathouses while still getting the four seat capacity in the main cockpit. An additional two in the front cockpit. So this is a 1950 uh, Shepard 22 foot runabout. It's kind of the most iconic, you know, model of Shepherds. When people say Shepherd, they kind of think of this style of boat. So this belongs to Tom Kale of uh, Washago. He uses it on the uh, Severn River in South Muskoka quite often. So my dad actually restored this boat about 40 years ago for uh, Peter Bailey. And uh, basically after 40 years of, you know, being stored outside and whatnot, Finish was all starting to kind of bubble off, as was kind of typical with Shepherds. So this winter I've stripped and refinished the whole thing. New deck grout, new linoleum inside, just kind of, you know, all the, basically all the stuff above the water line you see. Bottom was still in good shape, so we didn't have to do anything there. It's just a real nice family boat he's had for a few years now. These are kind of real practical boats with how big the cockpits are. You can really take a big load, obviously go through any any kind of rough water. An original old uh, straight six cylinder Chrysler. They pretty much go forever from what I've been told. A little maintenance. So this is a 1956 18 foot Shepherd runabout. It's owned by uh, Jim Barrick of the Buffalo uh, Antique Boat Club chapter. <clears throat> so it's a real nice little 18 foot model. They're a little bit more rare than the traditional Shepherds. You don't see as many of them around. This boat was kind of the same thing. It had the original kind of finish peeling off. I think Shepherds, because the cockpits were made with the plywood uh, ceiling boards, they kind of hold the moisture. I think that's a lot of the reason why a lot of the old finishes peel off in the way they do. So anyway, this is the same deal. The bottom is pretty much all good and it was just the deck and uh, hull strip and refinish. A lot of these deck grooves I had to V down, get a nice profile like they were done originally. Over 50, 60 years they build up with varnish and gunk and all uneven, so we also added some uh, deck frames while we were at it. <clears throat> the original had 14 inch deck spacing, so literally when you push down, like with your hand, it would go down quarter inch probably. So kind of surprised it made it this long without getting busted. So while we have it stripped, we think of a few things like that we can do to improve the longevity of the next period of its life. A pretty smart looking boat with a wraparound windshield and 50s style upholstery. This boat also has a, a top that's fitted to it. On rainy days, you can get out of the out of the weather, or get out of the sun on sunny days if you choose to. Pretty cool uh, steering wheel on it. I guess Shepard had a deal with one of the car makers where they'd he'd buy like 30 or 40 wheels off my ears. Definitely adds to the vintage look. Shepard originally used like a glazing. A lot of the wood they used was kind of different variations and colors, so. They didn't really do any lumber selection. Basically, they just, this thick glazing would just go over all the wood and make it a uniform color, but that affects adhesion of the varnish because all the pores are filled. So I think the two things is why when you see an old shepherd, they're very likely to have the bubbling finish. He just had this engine rebuilt. It's a dual carburetor, a little bit higher horsepower. 
This gentleman goes to quite a few boat shows a year, so I'm sure she'll be well traveled. So this is a uh, 1927 uh, Great Lakes Boat Building Company, big launch. So it's uh, coming from Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Family has had it since 1946. Their dad actually purchased it and they've been maintaining it and using it on Lake Geneva ever since. So yeah, I came in the fall and uh, we were told it was 39 feet and it got here and it was 40 and a half. So we had to do a little building modification to get it in the shop. But here it is and uh, Basically, it had a few bottom issues, so there's a big section of keel here and a couple planks that were rotten at the bow there where it would have trapped some water. So <clears throat> we had a few engine repairs like that, and then the whole boat was uh, stripped and refinished. 41 feet, definitely a lot of uh, stripping and refinishing, but she came up pretty nice. It's the real turn of the century look all uh, bronze hardware and the hardware on this boat is really cool especially these uh, these smokestack ventilators so they're real works of art they're all riveted together and then, yeah so they have two uh, shelves built in one of them's about like that and one of them's on this side with all little pipes built into a drain that goes out so what it does is it lets the air go out and then prevents any rainwater or anything from coming in. That's original 1927 hardware. You definitely don't see, you know, something that stately every day. Yeah, so this was repowered with a Yanmar diesel about 20 years ago. This is more of like a, you know, family user boat. They get out and use this all summer, so a little different than the boat show crowd. For how long it is, it's really not a huge amount of cockpit because the decks are so long. And you can see how long that back deck was. It was actually an, an extra two feet longer before they chopped some off a few years ago because of the rot. We did a couple of aesthetic repairs as well. The combing boards here were cracked. You can faintly see the crack there. So what we did is we glued on a new piece on the inside. So we were able to keep the original on the outside and basically intact and then the stain matching you know no one would ever tell then we you're able to get a nice strong combing board and still retain the original there's a piece of old rotten keel a couple pieces there see the water and moisture slowly gets in and it's actually got a dual helm this boat so you can steer it from the front or the back chauffeur driven yeah so she'll go in a couple weeks Tim Butson. This is Tim Butson's wooden boat builder. I've been almost 40 years in business, sixth generation doing this. My dad will be 97 in June, still alive, still moving, and still supervising to some degree. Um, this is a 24 foot Shepherd, 1955. Um, we originally did it 30 some years ago for a gentleman that unfortunately died before we got it finished and his widow sold it to a local fellow here. Uh, he in turn decided to sell it, which I got involved with, and we sold it to the present owner. And so 30 years later, I'm putting the bottom on it again. So this is the second bottom. It's kind of a rarity that this one, like every 30 years, it comes in for a bottom. So. Um, that's what we've done. We're almost finished here. Um, this is all done traditionally as we do with all our boats. So it's a typical shepherd bottom with a mahogany inner skin, canvas, and then a mahogany outer skin. Um, um, part of the traditional bottom plates, these are, like I said, two layers of mahogany. So the pencil lines here represent the plank running diagonally, which is quarter inch underneath this. So all these are the planks that go down first, and then a canvas goes over top, and we have to keep transferring the lines up so we know where the planking is. And now that we're to this stage, um, again, originally, 
the outer plank and the inner plank were all tied together with copper rivets, um, which is fine when they're built brand new, but once they've been done, um, we can't access as much of it as easily to do the riveting, so we'll end up bolting this with little stainless bolts in the same pattern that would have been riveted. So there's a whole bunch of holes to be drilled and more plugs. And that'll, in that in turn, will tie everything back together and then we can clean it all up and paint it and we're ready to go. Um, in doing this, we have to take the side plank off because we replaced the chine behind this. The biggest fault with this boat when it came in was the transom was rotten and all the framework was rotten pretty much up to the bow. So all the framework's been changed, the keel's been changed, the lower part of the stem's been changed and all the transom framework's been done. So we've had to take these many boards off to access the framework so we could replace it. And then we'll be able to, we just have to really all smoothed up yet. Yeah. So, um, being a twin drive originally, it would have had two intermediate keels, um, midships here, um, for the shaft and the struts and rudders, and two short stringers um, and to hold the engine up. And once we switch, we had to modify all the frames because we didn't need the place for the extra stringers and the extra little keels. And then the, the new keel had to have a shaft log and stuff provided. Plus we had to extend the original stringers all the way back so that's so the new engine will have something to sit on. The finish on the boat is basically a nice shape. He's kept it in a boathouse and basically hasn't used it a lot. Um, and the last year it was just thinking of it so I asked him not to use it at all last summer um, because it was leaking and I'm just scared of it causing major problems so it stayed up in the boathouse. Um, so once we're done this work, then we get it right side up, the engine goes back in, a new engine, and I'm wanting to re-varnish the whole thing just to shine it up so it looks spiffy again. And I think he's going to do the upholstery as well. So we're switching from a twin engine setup to a single engine. So in turn, I have to redo the dashboard because we've got way too many gauges. <laughs> so I got a lot of holes to cover up and we'll put a single dashboard setup. Uh, all right, uh, I believe this is a 1961 Century Raven, 19 foot. Um, it's an all mahogany boat. Um, it was sold to a couple about a year ago. They got a summer out of it before it wouldn't float too well. So they quickly learned a lesson that maybe I should have had a look at before they bought it. Um, once we discussed the amount of repairs it needed, it was basically given to me to dispose of. So I took it as a bit of a project that my grandson and I could work together on just to help him do or learn some woodworking or whatever. And um, so we decided that we'd finish it up and Hopefully be able to use it ourselves, um, get my dad out maybe, if we can get him in it. Um, other than that, when I researched it, um, I found a excerpt from a movie, I don't know what you want to call that. Um, but in the, on the Golden Pond, there's the famous Kushcraft that was there. There was also a 19 foot century raven that was used as a mail boat, so it's also in the movie. So this isn't the boat, but it's the same, same boat. So that's kind of interesting. Um, so we're just about done. Um, I ended up, um, the motor was in it. It was originally a V8, 130 horse, um, needed a lot of work, and between Jeff and I, we decided it wasn't worth investing in. 
and between the two of us we had some stock engines that were in nicer shape so I've taken one and pretty it all up and we know it's running well and I'll put it in place of the original engine. Um, so that's about it. One thing about lap strakes is that because of the way they're built, they come apart very easily as long as nobody's messed with them and actually glued them together. So once you unfasten the planking, you can basically take it apart as it was built. And then in turn, if you're repairing or, or replacing the bottom as we would have, um, because you can get it apart, every plank you take off gives you a pattern to make a new plank. So that, that helps. Um, and basically the downfall of the boat was that the framework, it had had apparently major repair work done to it, but the problem with the boat and the reason it was leaking so badly is that the main framework in it had all rotten, so there was no sort of internal um, structural strength to the boat, so the planking could move whatever, so it really couldn't do much else but leak. So um, it's either take the bottom off and replace all that, or you theoretically could take it apart inside and take the whole framework out that way and replace it all. But it was, because I wanted to make sure the planking was okay and be able to refasten it all and, and bed it all, it was easier just to take all the planking off, do the framework, and put it all back on again. It has a new keel and the stem. Well, so. So that's what we did.